Well, we're delighted today and honored to have uh, in attendance to bring some remarks to us uh, what some people consider to be the most powerful man in the state. And that's because he holds the capacity of president pro tem of the Senate. Uh, and I want to tell you, folks, uh, he has, uh, since occupying that capacity, uh, has lived to his promise that he made to us that there, he would oppose tobacco t increase in tobacco taxes or other adverse impacts on this crop. And uh, I think that uh, the proof is in the pudding, as they say. Senator, you have, uh, you have been a great champion. As we have uh, uh, discussed by the commissioners described, one of the most successful agricultural supportive legislative sessions that we, uh, we may have had in quite some time. So if you would help welcome uh, for a legislative report on the uh, activities happening, happening to, to us in the uh, General Assembly, the uh, Honorable Phil Berger, President Pro Tem of the Senate. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it um, is good or bad to be referred to as uh, most powerful or influential or whatever, but uh, first time my wife heard that, um, well, you don't want to know what she said. <laughs> so, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it is always good to, uh, to be around uh, folks that, uh, that, that work in agriculture and particularly uh, who are involved in the uh, the tobacco business or uh, any uh, any form of tobacco raising and selling and uh, all of uh, all of those things? My family uh, on my mother's side was uh, deeply involved in uh, in the tobacco industry uh, from the farming standpoint, uh, primarily in Caswell and Person counties years and years ago. <clears throat> um, I still remember when I was about uh, five years old having the opportunity to uh, spend some time uh, at the tables handing leaves and, uh, and then graduating to uh, some other fun time activities, I guess is the best way to put it. But I'm um, sorry I couldn't be with you last night. I understand that uh, Senator Brown, uh, Senator Rucho, and Senator Brock uh, took good care of you. Uh, I don't know uh, where uh, Senator Rucho and Senator uh, Brown are, but I know Senator Brock is still here. Uh, also, uh, I know that my good friend uh, Bill Brisson is here. Uh, he is uh, a champion for, uh, for conservative values and for the farming communities around the state of North Carolina. So, Bill, appreciate your service. Um, we, uh, we have had a number of people tell us that the 2013 session of North Carolina General Assembly was uh, one of the best sessions ever for agriculture in North Carolina. And I think one of the reasons for that is that uh, we've, we've got people in leadership positions in the Senate who understand the importance of our agricultural uh, communities, uh, understand the importance of agriculture to our overall economy, and uh, will uh, we'll continue to be committed to uh, making sure that uh, folks in, uh, uh, in the rural areas, uh, folks uh, involved in agriculture, uh, have an opportunity to be successful. And uh, I know, uh, I don't think Senator Jackson is here today, but uh, Senator Brent Jackson uh, and Senator Brock as the co-chairs of our Ag Committee uh, have, uh, have really uh, done a good job in making sure that the voice of agriculture is heard uh, in the North Carolina legislature. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing what I need to do uh, either if I didn't recognize uh, David Rouser, who is a uh, former uh, member of the North Carolina Senate who is here as well. Uh, David has been a champion uh, for agriculture since his days working for Senator Helms uh, in, uh, in Washington. Let me tell you a little bit about what we've done uh, because if, uh, if all you've done is read in the newspapers, uh, particularly the, uh, the urban newspapers uh, or watched uh, television, uh, you probably uh, have gotten a um, inappropriate, uh, inaccurate, uh, and uh, just plain wrong view of uh, things that have been happening in the North Carolina General Assembly. First thing I want to talk about is tax reform. Uh, we, in 2013, passed uh, in North Carolina uh, the first major reform of North Carolina's tax code uh, since the Great Depression. And let, let me tell you what that means uh, 
uh, to, uh, to, to, to you and, and to most folks around the state. We had uh, in North Carolina uh, the highest tax system or tax rates in the southeast. I was first elected to the General Assembly in 2000, and uh, in my campaign in 2000, one of the things I talked about was how uh, someone who wanted to start a business or grow a business or locate a business uh, in North Carolina uh, would, uh, would, in many instances, look at our tax code, and if they had an opportunity to go somewhere else, uh, in many instances, they probably would, because we had the highest marginal income tax rate in the southeast, had the highest corporate uh, tax rate in the southeast, still had a death tax uh, in North Carolina, uh, and, um, and it was uh, really a problem for us. And so what we did in 2013 is uh, we have made North Carolina competitive uh, again uh, in the southeast with reference to our tax rates. We took our uh, individual tax rate from 7 and 3 quarters percent uh, to 5.85 percent this year. It will be 5.75 percent uh, next year. And if we, uh, we have, if I have anything to say about it, we're going to take it down even lower than that as we continue to go forward. Our corporate income tax rate. Uh, was 6.9 percent, highest in the southeast, one of the highest in the country. Uh, we took it to 6 percent this year. It will be 5 percent next year. If we hit revenue targets, it will be 4 percent the year after that, and it will be 3 percent the year after that. Uh, all of that to, uh, to, to provide uh, the private sector, uh, the folks that, uh, as uh, my friend uh, David Rouser uh, refers to, the folks that are pulling the wagon, uh, an opportunity to be successful an opportunity to uh, keep more of what you earn, uh, and uh, an opportunity to uh, reinvest that money in what you would like to use your money for. Uh, the other thing that we did is we uh, eliminated uh, the death tax in North Carolina. Uh, many farmers, uh, many small business people uh, had, uh, had the real concern uh, that uh, about the fairness of the government reaching in your pocket uh, after you were gone and, uh, and continuing to take, uh, take more of your money. So we've eliminated that uh, in North Carolina. And as I said, we're not finished uh, yet. The franchise tax is, uh, is one of those taxes that is a particular impediment for, uh, for people in business. Uh, we intend to continue to take a look at that and hopefully find ways to reform uh, or hopefully eliminate the franchise tax uh, as well. The other thing that we've done this year, and this is the third year in a row we've, uh, we've addressed this, uh, is regulatory reform. Uh, in 2011, uh, we passed a regulatory reform measure. 2012, we passed a regulatory reform measure. 2013, we passed a regulatory reform measure. And the idea behind our reform of the regulatory climate is uh, to get folks off of your back uh, with rules uh, and requirements that are unnecessary uh, for either public health, public safety, uh, or for individual safety. And so we've had great success in finding a number of rules that are out there and either eliminating them or rewriting them in some way. And we will continue to do that because as long as you have a situation where unelected bureaucrats have the authority of passing rules that have the force of law, uh, you have to have uh, your elected legislators with the authority and the willingness to look over their shoulders and to make decisions that, uh, that, that maybe some of these rules don't need to be there. And so if you have uh, suggestions, concerns, uh, any ideas about uh, regulations that are in place uh, that uh, could use some modification or elimination, please let us know because we will move forward with, uh, with looking at that. Uh, E-Verify, we made significant changes this year in the E-Verify program uh, in order to, uh, to make uh, in order to recognize and to, uh, to change the statute uh, so that farmers and others uh, weren't covered over with unnecessary paperwork uh, in connection with uh, the folks that work for you. So uh, we, uh, again, we will continue to look at ways to try to uh, modify that program if it becomes, if it is necessary. Um, I know uh, Steve was just talking about um, uh, TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership. I have no idea why our Attorney General would be willing to sign on to that letter. Uh, but I can tell you uh, that the members of the legislature, at least uh, the members of the majority uh, party in the legislature, uh, will do whatever we can to, uh, to try to uh, influence that decision. Uh, to single out tobacco in that way is, uh, is, is not only unfair, uh, 
uh, but it is something that uh, fails to recognize the importance of uh, tobacco and our agricultural economy. Once they do it to tobacco, they'll start doing it to other things as well, and it's just not right. So we'll do what we can to try to influence that, uh, that decision. The last thing I want to talk about is, uh, is something that every time a politician comes and talks to a group of folks, they want to talk about this, but I want to tell you some of the things that we've done. Uh, our future in North Carolina ultimately depends on our ability to educate the next generation. It depends on the quality of uh, not just our public schools, but the quality of, uh, of uh, the opportunities that uh, kids have to get an education in North Carolina. Uh, we have presently uh, one of the finest university systems in the country. Uh, we have presently one of the finest community college systems in the country. They both do a marvelous job. Uh, we have some real problems and we have some real struggles uh, with our uh, K-12 system and, uh, and with the outcomes uh, that we're seeing there. And so we have uh, made, a made it a particular point of emphasis to uh, deal with uh, some of the real problems in education. One of the problems that we've identified, uh, and many of you may have heard something about this over the past uh, several weeks because there's, uh, uh, there's been a lot written about it, uh, but one of the problems we've identified is kids don't learn how to read when they're in school. And if, uh, if, a, ca if a child is unable to read, uh, they are unable to do anything else. You, you can't employ folks on your farm uh, if, uh, if they're unable to, uh, to, to read. Uh, folks in manufacturing can't employ folks who are unable to read. Let me give you a statistic. Fully 40 percent, 40 percent of the kids uh, who, uh, who have finished third grade in North Carolina are not able to read. And we've known for a thousand years that the progression is a child learns to read and then takes that skill and uses it to read to learn. And so when they get to the fourth grade, the fifth grade, the sixth grade, the seventh grade, uh, they, uh, they need that reading skill in order to be able to master those uh, additional subjects. Uh, we passed a, um, a bill in June of 2012 called Read to Achieve. Uh, the, it's a very simple concept that uh, we want to make sure that when a child goes into kindergarten, uh, they're, they're assessed as to uh, whether they're ready to learn to read. And then in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, uh, we emphasize reading and uh, uh, mastery of, uh, of reading and literacy uh, in those grades. But if at the end of third grade, uh, they are unable to read and they need additional remediation, then maybe that child ought to be held back uh, for another year to make sure that they can read. And so we've, we've passed that and we will continue to pass that and other legislation uh, to help improve uh, our public schools, uh, to help improve the opportunity uh, that our kids have to, uh, to, to really do what they want to be able to do and give them the skills that, uh, that they would need. We have, um, uh, and we've backed up our efforts in education by actually funding education at higher levels uh, each year that we've been in the majority. In 2011, 2012, and 2013, we will continue to do that. And the governor and the speaker and I, uh, over the next week or so, will be making uh, several announcements having to do with uh, some of the pay structure uh, in, uh, in our K-12 system to uh, try to address some real problems that we have there. Uh, those are just a few of the highlights of uh, what, uh, what we've done over the past year, uh, and in some instances a little uh, more than that. Uh, we will continue uh, along the path that we have, um, have uh, been working on. Uh, we will continue to uh, do those things that emphasize the importance of the private sector, emphasize the importance of our agricultural uh, communities, uh, emphasize the importance of, uh, of farming in, uh, in North Carolina as a whole. And we want to hear from you. We want to, uh, to hear uh, your concerns uh, about anything that uh, we are doing, uh, your suggestions about things that we ought to do. Uh, and uh, every once in a while, if, uh, if we've done something right, uh, it, it doesn't hurt if you uh, tell your legislator that you appreciate uh, what they've done. Uh, and I want to tell you how much I appreciate uh, what every one of you do in your communities and uh, what you do for the state of North Carolina. Uh, agriculture, uh, tobacco farming, uh, tobacco uh, has uh, historically been uh, one of the, uh, the, the key industries uh, in North Carolina, and agriculture still is the number one uh, 
the, the number one industry in North Carolina. Uh, let us know what we can do to help. Uh, thank you for what you're doing, and I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here today.